All right, last episode of the day, which I'm glad for. Hold on a minute. Yeah. Because I'm, <clears throat> honestly, I need to relax. Uh, so episode 10, stalk like an Egyptian. Uh, and so in this episode, uh, Merton accidentally releases a mummy from the museum and the mummy is out to get a bride. And who do you think he goes after? That's right, Stacy. Cause we haven't done that already. <laughs> episode 10, I think we've done that three or four times now. Three times, I think, cause we did, um, the the bookmobile lady got Stacy. Um, I'm already blanking, um, so the music doesn't go off just in case. Um, went after Stacy. Butch went after Stacy. Catwoman went after Stacy, but that was jealousy. The witch coven went after Stacy, and the the swamp thing kind of went after Stacy, but not really. And then in the most recent episode, Stacy was had her soul sucked out by the uh, <clears throat> the soul sucking. I can't remember that word. Salesman, soul sucking salesman. But um, once again, Stacy is also. Another victim. Just another victim. Uh, this time for the mummy, King Budelmar the Lesser. Uh, this is one of my favorite episodes, is watching this again. I knew they was gonna have, I've seen this one a million times. I really didn't even need to watch this episode again because I know this by heart, I've seen it so much. It's one of my favorite. I think this is actually the first episode I ever saw of the show, which is interesting, I think. I know it was a season one episode. I know it was a season one episode, but um, and then they were already on season two when I found the show because I remember seeing the commercials. But oh, look, we got a new character coming in, and she knows about the wolf. And I'm not gonna spoil what that is yet, but uh, <clears throat> yeah. So King Budamar, or King Budamar, or King Bud. I'm gonna call him now. King Bud is freed by Merton by accidentally reading from the sarcophagus. And then he takes his ring, which allows him to look human, or in this case, look like a supposedly teenage boy, the early 20s, but like all the actors are early 20s. But and so he's after Stacy because, of course, he is. He tries to hypnotize her. Uh, and this has a focus on senior stuff. Merton has a subplot where he's constantly changing hairstyles because he wants to hurt hairstyle for the senior picture. And again, all the every time I say this is the senior year, it just kind of, I don't know. Knowing that there's three seasons and there's seniors for all three seasons and the season lasts three years, the series lasts three years. I don't know, it's very weird. <clears throat> it's very weird. Uh, but yeah, so, um, because Tommy and Merton, or Tommy mostly, says, I'm gonna stop you. You give me back Stacy and I'm gonna stop you. And, uh, so he decides to put the plagues of Egypt down on the school. When he gives them lice, frogs, which which go boo del mar, which is a nod to the uh, Budweiser commercials at that time, where they had the frogs going Bud, Why, Zer. So it was a nod to that. Really, a Canadian show would do it though, but who knows? It aired in America as well as Canada, so who knows? But uh, yeah, and lice, the the water turned to blood. But it uh, was movie blood. Corn to red dye number two. Red, red dye number three? I don't know. It's, this is weird. This episode aired in 1999. Um, <clears throat> same year that the Mummy remake came out. They mentioned the Boris Karloff film, of course. I don't think the Brendan Fraser one came out yet. Or at least not when they filmed this. So it's very interesting. Same year. Yeah, I mentioned lice, my head is itching. I don't have lice, it's just itchy. Um, I got dry scalp and stuff. I have dandruff. I usually um, 
head and shoulders. So, take a shower and a shave. Not this. Anyway, uh, so yeah. Uh, and so Budamar hypnotizes Stacy. And, like, every time he tries, though, she gets away. And then after the whole scene with the plagues, he just has her under her spell. And he's going to smite all of these firstborn children. Which, in this episode, in this series, equates to all the seniors. Except, we know for a fact that not all of the children there are firstborn. Case in point, Tommy is not one of the firstborn children. He is the second child. And depending on which twin came out first, Tim or Travis, one of them is safe. Because while they're twins, one of them had to have been born first. One's older by a few seconds, so one of them would be safe. I don't know. I don't know. It's really weird. It's really weird, but... What do, you, what do you know? Um, so Budamar shows up for this picture dressed as a pharaoh. And they mention King Tut. Tut, Tut, Tut. Always with King Tut. Where he was standing to his garden knife was inventing belly that thing, a baba ganoush. It's easy to forget. With all this talk of King Tut, it's easy to forget he was just a kid. You know what I mean? I mean, if you've seen Peabody and Sherman, the movie, King Tut's a little kid, that that's real. He was, a, he, was, he was a kid. He wasn't an adult, he was a kid. That was the whole thing. Uh, yes, Tommy, of course, it ends. I think it would end. Tommy and Bud, King Bud, they fight. And he takes the ring off, turns it back into a mummy. He's somehow not animated anymore. Although he sort of is. They lock him up. And they have to return the ring. They show that Merton uses it to seduce women. Interpret that how you will, especially in today's landscape. And then, uh, there is a, there is another, uh, side story with the mayor, Tommy's dad, where he's trying to get, trying to find out where the mommy is because the, the guy in charge of the exhibit, who's going from Egypt to inspect it, and he's got to find it before the guy gets there. So at the end of the episode, they get it there, and the guy in charge had no idea what happened. We can come up and say something, but yeah, no one knows. But yeah, this is one of my favorites uh, to go back and watch. I love King Bud. I wish they had brought him back in some way, shape, or form. But as an ally, I would have done that. I'd brought him back as an ally of some sort. I don't know how, but. There are a few I would bring back as an ally. Like if they had a big villain to fight, like if they had to fight a whole, if the werewolf syndicate that will be introduced in season two had an entire army of werewolves and they needed an army of help, they'd call on people that they, that were once enemies. I would think King Bud, Swamp Thing, even Tim and Travis could help. Uh, Kaol and uh, some other people we'll meet later. Thank you for shopping phone. You know, a couple of my new chip gun. We'll get we'll get the Maxwell Fong in season three. But uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, just an old army of werewolves, and so they need an army of people. You know, people who would I don't know about Bud, but I know Cahold would be on their side. Although it would be weird to do that. Bring back the actress. Especially when you have her as Sloan. I don't know. But it's interesting. It would be interesting to do that. But uh, we'll talk about more of the... We'll talk about the uh, Werewolf Syndicate more in Season 2. But uh, for this... This is one of my favorites for sure. But uh, So, uh, yes. Uh, that's the last one for today. I'll move on to Episode 11 tomorrow. Which is... I don't have a sound on. I can't tell right off the bat. Hold on. Let me see if I can tell from the opener here. I have the sound off, so you're not going to see it. I have my glasses off, so you don't see it there. House. Okay. Taking. No, you do this one. Isn't 
this the one with the, the book? Oh, no, oh, oh, I know what this one is. I know what this one is. In the next episode, we are going to be introduced to Flugelhoff, Professor Flugelhoff. Well, the one episode that he's in, and he's just mentioned afterwards, but... <clears throat> yes, uh, so... Uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you in the next one.